Whole life insurance is the most powerful asset on the face of the earth. Now, uh, there are a lot of people out there like Dave Ramsey and Susie Orman who would tell you otherwise that whole life insurance is a ripoff, but I've got uh, 10 good reasons, 10, I think, stellar reasons that whole life insurance is the most powerful asset in the world and why it should be a cornerstone foundational component to your financial plan and to your personal financial world. By the time I get done with these two videos, I'm gonna do a two-part video series here on number one through five reasons and number six through 10 reasons why life insurance, whole life insurance properly designed uh, is the most powerful asset that you will ever have in your personal financial life. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit the bell, that way you're notified. That way when the next video comes out, you're notified, so let's just get into this. Hey, what's going on, Cashflow Hackers? It's Chris with Life 180, and for this video, we are talking about reasons one through five that whole life insurance is the most powerful asset in your personal financial life. And I know uh, for a lot of people, that is going to be seen as blasphemy for me saying this, but if you follow this channel, you understand where I'm coming at uh, with this stuff. And so uh, if you are an agent, uh, I really encourage you to really think about these reasons and think about how to communicate them more effectively. The better you get at this, the more you're gonna be able to connect with people, the more you're gonna be able to identify the challenges that people have in their life and be able to solve them. Uh, and if you're somebody who's looking to do this for yourself, I think these are the most key components that you need to contemplate. Uh, how does it impact you in your life, right? If, if you could figure out how these reasons might play into your life and what problems in your life it may solve, um, then you can go from there. And as you're going through this journey, if you have any questions, always know that down below in the description, there is a link to a free clarity call that you can set up with any one of uh, my coaches on the team. Uh, you can reach out, you can have any questions. It's called a clarity call for a reason. Our goal, our objective is simply to give you clarity more on your personal, personal financial journey uh, to help you have more clarity about what do you need to do to get from where you are right now to where you wanna go. Uh, and, and I promise you, it's, it's not a big sales pitch. Um, it is really designed to serve you the best. If it makes sense that uh, you wanna do business with us at some point in time, some way, shape, or form, if it, if it makes sense for everybody all the way around, uh, then, then obviously we can do that. But that is the purpose of the call is just to help you have more clarity about what you have going on and answer any questions that you have about whole life insurance and how it may fit into your financial life. So let's get into this. Uh, if I, I do have to say before I get going, as I'm talking, I have a tendency to talk pretty fast as try to be pretty high energy here, right? I'm just getting done with pneumonia and being off a 10 day stint with steroids uh, to help my lungs and I'm still feeling it a little bit. So if I get a little short of breath, bear with me uh, because that is why. So. Let's get into reason uh, one through five here and start with reason number one. If you watch this channel, I'm gonna just go to my board here. If you watch this channel, this is no surprise to you. Uh, life insurance is a self-completing plan. Right? So here's the deal. What do I mean by that? So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna share a little bit of a screen share right now uh, where all right, so when you look at this, this is what I wanted to share is this is an illustration when I talk about life insurance being a self-completing plan. What I'm talking about is the fact that you need to save money. We all need an emergency fund, right? And so I'm a big believer. Um, I've got a lot of videos explaining why this is the case, but I'm not gonna get into detail. I'm a big believer you need at least one to two years of income in a safe, liquid, accessible account in case of emergency and in case of opportunity. Now, uh, that said, I utilized kind of $50,000 as an example uh, to get started because if people are sitting there with uh, money sitting in a savings account or CDs or bonds or some other kind of safe guaranteed money that they would want to use in case of emergency, because remember you cannot utilize investments as an emergency fund because most of the time when we need to access that emergency fund is when the market is going down. And the worst thing that you could do is liquidate negatively performing assets. The whole purpose to this is to utilize them, uh, to utilize accounts that have guarantees to be able to take advantage of what's going on around us to, pro to provide us with more security, uh, to be that emergency fund and also uh, to be able to potentially be an opportunity fund because when the rest of the world is struggling, if you have this and you do what I'm talking about right here, you can be set up to win pretty significantly, right? So that's really important to understand. So now, what I wanna do here is I wanna get into this a little bit and show you. So you can see here, $56,000 right here. What I have 
is I said, okay, let's imagine you had $50,000 in a bank account or, or in a CD or something of that nature. Taking that 50,000 and then contributing $6,000 per year after that. Now, what happens here? This is where I call it a self-completing plan. 51,731 is your net cash value. That is the amount of liquid cash accessible that you can access year one in the whole life insurance policy. It's pretty powerful. Now, year two, you can see you contribute $6,000 and that policy goes up by $6,292 in value. So it's growing by more than you're contributing starting year two. Now you can see there's obviously a loss of a little bit of liquidity um, right out of the gate, but you do have about 92.5 to 93% liquidity <clears throat> right there in year one, which is pretty powerful. Now here's where it's a self-completing plan. If you were to put this money into, um, into a savings account and, and you were just had your $56,000 sitting in a savings account. Sure, you're gonna have a little more liquidity, you're gonna have a couple thousand dollars more in liquidity, but let's face it, that extra liquidity at that point in time is not gonna change your life. However, with a life insurance policy, when you have it in a life, whole life policy and it's designed properly, you can see the $915,000 uh, of death benefit right here. That is really, really powerful stuff. So when it's a self-completing plan, what I'm saying is, if something happens to you, a properly designed whole life insurance policy is the only financial vehicle in the world that'll make sure what you want to happen will happen when you want it to happen, whether you're here to see it or not. So if in year two, I happen to die, I, you know, and, and this is my policy for my family and my kids, and let's say I've contributed $62,000, 56 plus 6,000, they're gonna get $925,000, right? That's, that's, a, that's the benefit. Now, um, I wanna just kinda call this out for all the Dave Ramsey people out there that are like, oh, it's a scam, whole life insurance is a scam because the life insurance company is gonna only pay you the death benefit and they keep your cash value, right? That's, that's kinda what they position this as. So it's really important to understand how that works and I'm gonna show you that, is that the case? Yes, it is, but I'm gonna show you why that's actually exciting because when you die, and you have money in a savings account, that money is completely taxable to your heirs. When it's in a whole life policy, if they were to divide it and pay a smaller death benefit and cash value, the death benefit would be tax-free, the cash value would have to be taxed. Instead, they keep the cash value and they give you more death benefit and that gets passed along tax-free. Extremely powerful stuff. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about here. So you can see here, year one, you got $51,000 of cash value that's $915,000 of death benefit. Now, what does that mean? That's basically $915,000 minus 50 is about $865,000 of death benefit. So what you're really doing here is got you have an $865,000 death benefit, uh, then you add in the $51,000 and that increases the cash value in the policy. So check this out. The next year you add 6,000, the cash value goes up to 58, but look what happens. The death benefit actually goes up more than the cash value. Right, so your death benefit grew, or your cash value grew by 6,000, the death benefit grew by about 10,000, and so it's pretty sweet. The next year you put in an extra 6,000, the death benefit, or the cash value grows from 58 to 64, so it's growing by $6,600 here, you can see. The death benefit, once again, grew by another 10,000. The next year it grows by 11,000. So the death benefit, because of the fact that we're utilizing paid up additions to uh, increase the death benefit as the cash value increases as well, what happens is you're putting yourself in a position where while the, you're, you, you have that $865,000 of death benefit, well check it out, by year 10 it rolls around, you got 123,000, but you got $1,023,000 of, of life insurance, right? And, and so you back that out, you basically have $900,000 of death benefit, net, net. It's, 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 back, so it's, it's back where we basically started, right? So when we look at the fact that um, they are gonna keep the cash value, they're gonna pay you that death benefit. What they've done is they've been increasing the death benefit inside of the policy uh, to be able to counter the fact that they're gonna keep your cash value. Now, here's what I also wanna say to this. Um, not all policies are designed this way. Sometimes you can have it so the death benefit doesn't increase with the cash value. Uh, I'm not gonna say that that's good or bad, but those are the policies that Dave Ramsey loves to hate. Um, there are reasons where that can make sense and there are sometimes uh, it doesn't make sense to have them designed that way. Once again, it's the most important component of this is making sure that the policy is designed in alignment with your goals and expectations uh, for helping you achieve your objectives, right? So that is the first and foremost mo thing that you need to be focused on. Now, 
when we look at this, this is where I say it's a self-completing plan. At any point in time, if I'm trying to save money and I know that I need to save this money, if I look at this, in this scenario, look at this, I've got $110,000 that I've saved right here. That's 56, um, well, 50,000 is a front load plus 60,000, uh, $6,000 a year for 10 years. That's 110,000. At the end of 10 years, I've got $123,000 of cash value. So if I know that I need a year to two years of liquid net cash value, accessible, um, a, a, of safe, guaranteed, liquid, accessible money in case of emergency and opportunity, if you align with that, the quest, next question is, where do I keep my money? Well, a savings account, if anything happens, you just you have that there and you're, you're earning smaller return and uh, you don't have other benefits with it. In this account, when you do it, it's a self-completing plan. If something happens to you along the while, you get this death benefit, whatever year you're looking at in the right column here, I'm gonna zoom in a little more for you. Uh, you can see what's happening in the right column here. Um, that's pretty powerful stuff, that, that self-completing plan. Now, it, it, do I think that's enough life insurance for you? Probably not, honestly. Um, but I certainly think it's a way to get your dollar to perform more than one function. And so it will get you a good chunk of the way there. I would say do this, optimize it for cash value. And if you have a death benefit need greater than the amount that you're able to get in this policy, then I would say you supplement that with some good term insurance, right? So that's, that's going to help meet your needs as far as uh, what your wants are, as far as uh, the life insurance uh, requirements for what your objectives are, right? So that's that's an important thing. Now the other component to this, um, and what I want to do is I'm gonna I'm gonna scroll way down here. Uh, we're gonna go down. No, nope, I'm gonna go up a little bit. Um, all right. So here's the accelerated death benefit rider. Um, so what we can see if, if you become chronic uh, or terminally ill while you're alive. Look at this. Imagine you're 66. When you have this policy, you don't get this with most term policies. And if you do, you're probably not going to have them in place if you follow Dave Ramsey's advice and you and you you just get a term policy and let it expire. The great part about this is that if you become chronically ill, meaning you cannot perform two of six daily living activities, um, you know, required daily living activities, or you have dementia, uh, that qualifies you for this. What this means is that you can get a max lump sum. You can utilize the death benefit while you're alive for alternative treatments. Now, if you can get periodic payments um, of smaller amounts, um, you can get access to these lump sums. Uh, at 66 years old here, you got access to $1.691 million, right? If you get terminally diagnosed with an illness, meaning uh, you're diagnosed to, to uh, a death diagnosis basically with cancer or something else, in the next uh, 12 months, then you get access to this money while you're alive to deal with treatments. Now, I've, I've done videos on this talking about how my father-in-law has had to deal with this when he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Being able to control your own medical directive is an extremely powerful thing. So when I say this is a self-completing plan, this is what I'm talking about. So make sure that you have, uh, that you have complete clarity around what the goals are for your policy um, because when you, when you design um, the, the policy, you need to make sure, let me see here, let me get this right. You need to make sure that the policy is designed to meet your needs and, and you have to understand all the different ways that that policy can function. I say it's a self-completing plan, that's number one. But then at the end of the day, um, number two is the fact, and I'm gonna go over to my other board here, number two is the fact that you get living benefits with it. So it's a self-completing plan to make sure you know, you're good there, but we're gonna call it living benefits, um, right? So what, what am I talking about here? I'm talking about um, ABRs, accelerated benefit riders, like I just showed you, if you become critically, or if you become chronically or terminally ill, you have access to that money, right? Like that's a really powerful thing. But you also have uh, retirement income supplementation, right? That's a big deal. Those are all living benefits of your policy that you have uh, the ability to utilize. Most people think of life insurance just as death insurance. Um, once again, it's not. It's just a way to get your money to perform more than one function in your life. And when you figure this out, once again, you start to realize just these two things alone that I just told you. If you understand these two things, this becomes the biggest no-brainer in the world. But guess what? This is just number one and two. I still got another three for this video and then another video coming up with five more reasons after this.
So let's get into number three. Number three, uh, and I'm just gonna go here. Number three is life insurance is the BASF of financial industry. What do I mean by that? So I'm a child of the 90s. I grew, I guess I was born in the 80s, but uh, I, I kind of obviously went through teenage years in the 90s. And so a lot of the commercials from the 90s have implanted themselves in my subconscious, right? Watching football on Sundays and sports and whatnot. There were these commercials, the BASF commercials, and it, their tagline was that BASF, we don't make the products you buy, we make the products you buy better, right? So they said things like, we don't make the fishing line you use, we make it stronger. We don't make the paint you use, we make it brighter. We don't do this, we do that. You know, it's all, we don't make the products you buy, we make them better. And so whole life insurance, kind of going off what I was just talking about in one and two, we don't, it's, we don't, we're not the investment you make because life insurance is never an investment. That's an important thing to understand. We make the investments you make better because what does whole life insurance do? It's, it, it provides you with a tool, it is a tool that provides you with the ability to leverage it in a lot of different ways. It gives you more security, more guarantees, more opportunity, and more control of your money. And so when you have those attributes in a financial vehicle that makes everything else better, you can borrow against it, have access to more opportunity, because when you have this kind of capital, opportunity kind of seems to track you down, right? Like our opportunity right now, we're developing some stuff in the Dominican Republic. Extremely amazing. We never would have had access to that had we not had access to capital like you do in a whole life insurance policy, right? And so by doing that, it's pretty powerful stuff because we can kind of self-finance these projects that we're working on down there. It's really, really good stuff. And so, you know, that is the case, but you also look at it like it, it's, it's it, here's what I say, you're gonna get the guarantees on the upside, but you know, it, it's, it's gonna give you an upside potential extra growth because you're never gonna interrupt the compounding on your own money when you leverage it and borrow against it. But also, sometimes, let's face it, we don't hit the uh, ball out of the park when we're, we're picking investments. And so it gives you a little hedge on the downside because once again, you're never interrupting that growth. And so the money's gonna continually grow. And I've got a lot of other videos on that, but you know, once again, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell that way you're notified. Uh, I can't go into all the details here. This would become a three hour video, but you know, just make sure you dissect these topics chunk by chunk as they come out on the new videos. But just know it's the BASF, which means it's not the investments you make. It simply makes your investments better. Uh, the, thir the fourth one is real estate investing, right? And now this is kind of an extension of the BASF, right? It's the real estate is your investment, right? The whole life policy is not the investment. The real estate is the investment. However, when you, when you fund your policy properly and then you borrow against it, you leverage your policy after it's been designed properly to get into the real estate, now it's gonna make your real estate even better. This is what I wrote my book, Cash Flow Hacking About, and this is why uh, in January, I'm launching the new version of cash flow hacking, which is going to be extremely amazing. I actually have a video coming out later in the week here before New Year's explaining the power of funding all of your real estate deals. I use an example of a 20 year period going through instead of paying cash for houses, investment properties, using your policy, funding it through, showing you how much more money you could actually have at the end with all the other benefits, with all the other controls, with all the other protections and everything that goes with it, whole life insurance is gonna make your real estate investments better. Now, at the same time, what I'll also say to that, and I gotta just look at this really quickly, is, it, is it's gonna make, it's gonna make, uh, you know, I, I, should, I say real estate investing, but you could also like do day trading with this, right? Um, any, any type of investment would work, right? I didn't put day trading on its own thing um, because you know I don't, I don't deal so much with that, but I know that once again, if you're gonna utilize money for trading and you're gonna go and do that anyway, it's a really powerful uh, way to go. Now, another way to go is hard money lending. That's another reason whole life is powerful, um, is that if you wanna do hard money lending or you wanna be a private money lender, right, then having access to money inside of your whole life insurance policy can be a really powerful thing. These are uh, very similar, but they're just different in the way that you navigate them, right? Because if I, imagine if in, in this scenario that I'm looking to lend out $200,000, 
right? And if I were to be able to charge 15% on a hard money loan that's backed by maybe, maybe the property that somebody's flipping or something like that, and you're able to charge 15%, but your net cost is 5%, but all the while that policy is gonna be growing by 5%, so these cancel out, this policy is gonna, your, your, your cash value is gonna continue to grow. You're gonna be able to collect that 15%. You're, yes, the, a, after everything is said and done, you're charging 15%. You're gonna have a 5% cost. So the net there is 10%, but at the same time, it's gonna grow by the 5%. It's gonna continue to grow. So it winds up being a net net 15%, right? That is the power of utilizing a whole life policy rather than just taking $200,000 cash, interrupting the growth, because now when we get done with this, instead of $210,000 at this 15%, we're gonna have $210,000 plus we made the 15% there, right? Like that's, that's the power of this. When, when you really break it down, uh, that is the power of it. So that is, that is exciting. I hope, I hope these make sense. If you have any questions, comment in the comment section below. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the uh, subscribe, hit the bell that we are notified because this is just number one through five. The next video that I'm gonna launch tomorrow is gonna be number six through 10 on why whole life insurance is the most powerful asset in the world. Once again, comment in the comment section below if you have any questions. I will respond with videos, with comments, with whatever. I do my best to engage with every single comment. So, till next video, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a blessed, inspirational day. We'll talk soon. See ya.